Hello everyone, Chief Canuck here with some more Hunt the True Season 2, this time with a recap of Episode 1, Cube B-349. The episode begins as Pharaoh or Commander Maya Sankar is on her way to Midnight, a penitentiary hidden deep within an asteroid. Midnight isn't about reforming that it's prisoners, it's about making people disappear. As she was approaching, she verified the casualties from the rally. Watching the slaughter on the video feeds, her right hand and the rebellion escaped, but many friends and followers died. Once inside the facility, an ODST gave her a smug remark. He told her that she's welcome for saving her. Maya didn't appreciate that and punched the ODST. She was there to see Captain Ryback, but she took a detour first, to the cubes. The AI who greeted her seemed surprised, but Maya had the clearance. Maya stopped by at cube B-349. The AI said this person wasn't in a good way. The glass went from opaque to one-way transparency, allowing her to look inside. She saw a crude bunk, small toilet, and the prisoner sitting cross-legged, writing, mouthing words. Here was the most hated man on earth, the brave journalist and framed traitor, Benjamin Giroux. She promised her followers she would free him, but she wasn't going to. In fact, no one was. He was casted to the very edge of the Oni Empire. She could barely look at him. She had helped him, but she had also put him there. She told the AI to make the glass wall two-way. There Ben was talking to himself. Then he stared right at her. He was not the Ben she remembered him as. He stood up and Maya froze. He walked up to the glass and stopped. Maya was totally expecting Ben to verbally rip her apart. Oh, you! Ben, I know. I knew it. Okay, just listen, Ben. I just wanted to tell you that I, um... You're alive! I... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. you're alive! I, uh... Oh I knew you wouldn't go through with that suicide mission. I just kept convincing myself over and over uh, this whole time. Even after I screwed everything up, I kept saying Pharaoh would find another way. He still believed in Pharaoh. He still believed that there was hope. She discovered blood on his bunk, but Ben said it was his and not from the guards. He admits he had hit a rough patch a few times. He wasn't used to solitary confinement. There are now safeguards in place to protect him though. They play music and use gas to make him go asleep. He asked to see the time on her compad. He used this to assure that this was all real. It's a trick to make sure that he's not dreaming. He later tells her that he wants to help, but he doesn't want to get out. Despite the rallies in the outer colonies calling for his release. He repeatedly thanked Pharaoh for saving him. Michael Sullivan then piped in over the PA before Maya said too much. He ordered her to step away and to report to his office immediately and said her real name, Commander Maya Sankar. He said that she no longer has privileges to see his prisoner. Ben, starting to freak out, asked to see her compad to check that he wasn't dreaming. Then Ben pieced it together. He now knew she worked for Oni, and he went hysterical, banging on the glass asking who she was. The AI administered the gas sedative, and then silence. Maya went straight for Sully's office, and she was pissed yet again. She asked why Sully was at midnight. Sully was apparently there to prep Ben to be a PR asset, to make a video message for the Free Jero crowd in another attempt to solve civil unrest in the outer colonies. She is appalled. Ben's life has already been ruined, but they're still squeezing everything they can use him for. Maya says to Sully that this video message won't stop the rebels. However, Sully shrugs her off saying that he's following chain of command and basically implies that she's been undercover too long and her opinions aren't valid. She says Sully is out of his element and he has no idea what's going on down there outside of offices. He agrees that Pharaoh is steering factions away from conflict, but they're tired of waiting. Oni wants to crush the rebellion now. Sully justified his actions that he tried to keep Ben from finding the truth. He tried to warn him, but Ben kept digging too deep. He couldn't let Ben air all of Oni's dirty laundry. That panic would destroy more lives than the Rebellion or the Covenant would. As much as she hate to admit it, Sully was right. Now Captain Noah Ryback was ready to see her for a debrief. However, she wasn't here because of the Jero mission. Noah tells her that yesterday, disturbing transmissions and footage from several colonies in the region have surfaced. Video clips of mass destruction, seismic events, exploding buildings into the air, leveling cities in a matter of minutes. This is what I believe these helmet cams on the planet Meridian are depicting, Forerunner Guardians surfacing out of the ground. Noah says that they don't know what it is or what the people are shooting back at in the footage. These events fry everything in the area. There is no way Oni could keep this under wraps for long, so Maya is being reassigned. They still need Pharaoh though, 
but her new mission is to gather intel from one of these colonies. Oni has secured four sites, but the fifth has fallen into the control of the NCA, New Colonial Alliance, and Oni can't risk whatever they find falling into NCA hands. They also don't want to send in Spartans yet till they know what's going on. Noah then gave her one of their best AIs by the name of Black Box, and he totally steals the show. Maya asked about an agent by the name of Ari, who is already undercover for the NCA. He has gone dark though, and they can't re-establish contact. Oni did receive intel warning them about the attacks, but it came from an unreliable source. They couldn't verify it in time, and it came from a source that burned them once before. Speculation is that this informant could have been Dr. Halsey. She's well versed in Forerunner technology, and she's burned them once before. Seems like everything is beginning to intersect, leading up to Halo 5. As the episode ends, Pharaoh kind of reflects on everything that she's just learned. In all of her previous missions, she's dealing with people, but this was bigger. She realizes all of humanity could be at risk. Since then, a short 20 second interlude audio clip titled Failed Transmission was uploaded by Maya. She's on the colony, Conrad's Point, and she admits that it looks like something big is indeed happening soon. This is Agent Maya Sankar. I'm on Conrad's Point in a planet wide dark zone. I managed to make contact. The situation inside could be potentially hostile, but something big. And, and it is definitely coming soon. I don't have time to wait. I'm headed into the camp now. No matter what happens, I hope it's not as bad as I Now, if you guys have seen the opening cinematic for Halo 5 Guardians, one of the screens shown on the intel by Thomas Lasky and Sarah Palmer shows a colony Conrad's Point indeed being one of those colonies attacked from one of these mysterious Forerunner events, which we all know as Guardians rising up from the ground. And with that, that's a recap for Episode 1. There's a new Halo 5 commercial airing tonight during Sunday Night Football, and I wonder if it's related to these helmet cam videos. I hope it's live action because I absolutely love Halo live action ads. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Chief Canuck, and I'll see you guys next time.